started, sir. Always waiting on Wayne. I'm just kidding you, Wayne. I'm just kidding you. It's just a joke. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Woodland Pond. How are you? Um, my name is Michelle Grimalia. I'm the president and CEO here at the community. Welcome. We're so excited to have you. Um, today is going to be a great day. Uh, we absolutely love this event. We do this, uh, we always kick these off in the spring, and somehow it seems like it's always a beautiful day like this. Uh, as you can see outside, we are getting ready to do our first summer kickoff barbecue, um, and our, our gentlemen are putting our tent up. But you're gonna have a great day here at Wilma Pond today. I have a lot of you been here before. Good, great. Um, you're gonna have a great panel of residents that are gonna tell you about some of the things they love about Woodland Pond, maybe some of the challenges that they've had or, or issues that they've encountered. And I think that, that that helps you get a sense of um, some of the things, you know, maybe questions or things that they thought about when they were starting to become a resident. Um, because this is a big, a big decision, right? What are you gonna do? Do I wanna leave my home? Do I not wanna leave my home? What kinds of things do I think about when I make a decision like this? Um, just a couple of things about me. I've actually been here at Woodland Pond since construction, the original construction. And we're going to be 15 years old in September. And that is a little bit unique to me because I have been here since the beginning. But many of our staff have been here for at least 10 years. Um, many have been here for 15. Um, a lot of people come and stay for a long time. We still have residents that have been here since the day we opened our doors. Um, it's a really fantastic community. I hope you guys have a great day. I'm not going to ramble on because I literally could go on and on, but you don't want to hear from me. That would be boring. You want to hear from these folks. Uh, we're starting with you, Paul? All right. Are we? I don't know. Yes, yeah. protocol. All right, then we're starting with Paul. This is Paul, and I'm going to tell you whatever he wants to say. Enjoy your day. <laughs> Uh, my wife Dawn and I came here almost seven years ago, and before we came here, we had looked at six of these retirement communities in Pennsylvania, in New Jersey, and I guess three in New York and one in Connecticut. And then we had our uh, accountant, who is also a lawyer, look at all the paperwork, the numbers, the agreement you signed, that sort of thing. And hands down, among the six, Woodland Pond came out on top hands down, in terms of the, the, uh, the um, quality of the um, accommodations here, the uh, cost of living here, the food, the fact that, by the way, the kitchen recently won an award for, uh, for its um, service, uh, a national award. Um, we compared all of the cost of living where we were in Northern Westchester with the cost of living here. And I think it was something like $7 more to live here at that time. So the, the cost of doing it really meant a lot to us. And all the services that are provided here, you know, you're never gonna shovel snow here. And by the way, if you have to go out when it's snowing, your car will have been cleared off. So, uh, there is an incredible health plan here. There is a return on investment if, you're, if you pass away. Um, I, I forget what the percentage is now, but I think it's as high as 50% of what you paid to come in is returnable. Um, one reason we came here, and it's an important one for everyone, is that we do not want to be a burden on our children, on our families. And coming here relieves them of taking care of us, of getting us to doctors if we have to go, of handling finances if we, you know, get to hold to handle. So that was very important, never to be a burden on the family. And when I came here, I said, I'm not joining any committees. I've been on committees all my life. Well, within a year, I was on five. I think I'm down to three now. So um, there's plenty to do here, plenty to do. Uh, I enjoy hiking. There's 70,000 acres of hiking out here, some of which are carriage roads, which if you are not able to uh, uh, really hike uh, roots and rocks, there are plenty of level carriage trails for you to walk and enjoy the nature. Um, there's also the National Park, or the State Park, Minnewaska, which is wonderful. 
there is the wood shop here. I don't know whether any of you are woodworkers here, but down below this room is a wonderful wood shop. And we do all kinds of things for residents here and for our own use. Um, I think I should shut up, but I should also mention that there are 49 special interest groups here. If you have an interest and you want to do something about it, there are plenty of ways to start one here or to join one, anything from car playing on up to the uh, woodshop. Uh, there's also, I should close by saying, I think this place has a sense of togetherness that I never expected to find here. There's a real communal aspect here. You will get to know people, you will have new friends in no time flat, and you'll be part of that community. Even if you just want to hang out and watch television, you're still going to be a part of it. Uh, enjoy the fluid. Who's next? Hello, everyone. I'm Dawn, um, Sangria, Paul's wife. Um, I came to live in Pod while I was still working. I'm a ordained Unitarian Universalist minister, and I had a congregation in Pomona that I wasn't ready to leave. So we moved in, and I commuted down to Pomona for two years. And then I decided that I was done with that and um, retired. So when I retired, I went to see Michelle, that young woman who was here a minute ago, uh, Michelle. Um, and I said, um, what do you think? Give me some advice. Uh, I'm, I'm newly retired. I, I'm not quite sure how to proceed. What do you suggest? And she said two things that stayed with me. One was, don't join a whole lot of committees right away. Don't get over involved here. See if you can take a breath, have some, have some uh, leisure, um, take it easy, and, and then you'll know what you want to do next. So um, I tried to take that advice. And, and she asked me what I, what, what I cared about, what I was interested in. If you could do something new, she said, what would you do? And I said, I'm interested in sustainability. So a few months later, there was a program here that was put together by a resident. He called it the Sixth Extinction. And what it was was a collage of uh, various videos about the climate crisis and where we were headed and how, how awful it is. And at the end of that show, when the lights came up, there were a number of people in the audience who were in tears, including me and including Michelle. And it was at that point that we decided we needed to have a sustainability committee. So um, fast forward four years, we have a sustainability committee here that has 50 people on the list served, that has done a number of projects, including a project to replace all the bulbs in the whole place with LEDs, a project to uh, recycle the plastic containers that they put the takeout food in, uh, a project to uh, replace some of the grass in our lawns with pollinating gardens. That's my project right now. And um, I'm, um, uh, I'm, I'm deep into that, that um, let's get rid of the lines thing. And um, it's, it's wonderful for me to be working with other people here. We have a team of people, there are about 10 of us, who are really uh, interested in um, replacing some of the lawn with something that's a little healthier. You, if you get a chance to look outside, over on the south slope, there's a, a, a couple of demonstration gardens that have just been put in. It's taken us two years to get there, but we now are actually moving forward with that project. So you can come here and make an impact on what happens here. I'm also a gardener uh, of my own gardens. I, I, when the first year I came here, I had a gardener on my porch 
The second year I came here, I had a garden along the wall right around my porch. The third year I came here, I had a naked garden back in the corner. Each time I ask the landscape committee and the physical plant chair if I could do that. And everybody said yes. My experience here in Little Pond is that everybody says yes to me. If I want to do something, they say, yeah, go ahead, try that. And that's wonderful. It's wonderful to be in that kind of a nurturing place. The other thing I do here at Little Pond is sing. I, I'm a part of the Pondoliers, which is our chorus. The Pondoliers is ex extraordinary because there are people in the Pondoliers who have never sung before in a chorus. You're 80 years old and you've never sung before in a chorus. And there are people who have been singing their whole life. And that's interesting. It's interesting to try to um, find a repertoire for those people. And it's interesting to watch all of us learn music together. We have a concert tonight, by the way. Um, I also sing with a chorus that's based in Woodstock that has nothing to do with Little Pond. Um, it's uh, called Ars Coralis. We're doing Carmina Verana at the end of the, of the month. Um, and I've uh, been bold enough to put the invitations for Carmina Carmina Verana right here. If you're interested in that concert, you can come up and get one of these afterwards. I'm um, the, one of the most challenged singers in that group. It's a very professional group. But I was also advised when I came here that it was a good idea to have something going on outside. So it's good to have a balance. You can do as much as you want to here, and you can do as much as you want to in the community. And of course, there are amazing opportunities. So um, I'm, I'm, I love living here. And, and we have very close friends here. And um, I'm, I'm uh, welcoming you to consider coming and joining us. Thanks. I'm Mary Lou Dillon. Uh, those of you who I've met, um, you may never remember my name, but you will remember my husband's name. I'm married to Bob Dillon. <laughs> um, I'm an only child, which is unusual for a baby boomer, and my husband and I have no children. Um, in our married life, we buried three parents, and so we know, we absolutely positively know how much effort, work, energy that takes. And we don't have children, grandchildren, nieces, nephews. We don't have any of those people to depend upon. And so we needed to find a place that we would be able to spend this part of our lives. And this is the best thing we ever did. Um, I didn't want to deal with the house anymore. When it would start to rain, my stomach would tie up into a knot because I knew we'd have water in the cellar. I didn't want to deal with calling plumbers. I didn't want to deal with calling the electrician. Now I don't have to do those things. Um, we, like <laughs> other people here on this panel, visited six places and the warmth of the atmosphere, which is genuine here, was like no other place we visited. Um, you expect the staff to smile when you go around for a tour. So did the residents. They smiled and said hello. For those of you who are looking at other places, pay attention to that and see how often residents do that. At one place we visited, I heard a resident talk to a staff member in a way that I knew I could not live in that community. The integration of new residents into the community is the best that I have seen. <clears throat> what happens is the first like week and a half or so, 
that you come, your dinners are lined up for you so you get to meet some other residents. After that, you get telephone calls from perfect strangers, which at first really kind of creeped me out. I wanted to know how they knew who I was, my telephone number. You know, it was well. What I discovered is they were from the welcome committee, <laughs> and um, they invited us for dinner. And it was just a wonderful way to meet just a myriad of people. And the last thing I will tell you about that is it still gives me chills. We had dinner with a husband and wife, <coughs> the husband whose work I taught about lived here. So you really should seriously consider this place. Hi, I'm Wayne Lavender. I've been here two and a half years from Brooklyn. And um, my concern at first, along with the concerns of a lot of people who come here from uh, the city, is um, this is so different from the city. Well, of course, um, it certainly isn't uh, altogether different. I uh, occasionally take the bus from here into New York City to visit friends every month or two. Um, it costs under $30 round trip and it's much easier than driving, no garage, um, and there's no stops. You get the bus stations here in town, the next stop is Port Authority, Manhattan, an hour and 30 minutes. Um, or you can go, you can drive to Poughkeepsie, leave the car at the lot there, and take the train. Um, about the same amount of money, a little less time um, directly, uh, well, a couple of stops in, in Westchester. Um, there's a lot here um, that's familiar to the cultural opportunities you get in the city. Um, there are museums, there are galleries, um, and there's also Momonk, and there's also the Culinary Institute, and there's also farm stands that you don't, that you don't have to pay New York City prices for. Um, uh, more importantly, um, I have a list here of band that I want. Every month, you can sign up to go to, for visits to parks, to museums, to concerts of all sorts in Kingston, in Newburgh, in Woodstock, um, all over the places. Of course, here at SUNY New Falls or at Vassar nearby in New City. Um, there are all kinds of cultural events, and most of us get driven there. There's a bus that costs almost nothing, and we we get driven there. We don't have the hassle of driving at night, back and forth. Um, we also have the joy of having other people we know to schmooze with afterwards about the cultural event, the concert, for example, that we just saw, indoor or outdoor. Um, learning. Um, I spent decades teaching at Einstein Medical School, and I um, said enough of that. Instead, I'm a student again. I've now taken four lifelong learning courses here, um, basically free. Um, some are every week for four weeks, some every week for eight weeks. No term papers, no tests, <laughs> no grades. Um, and and uh, and it's either here, right here, or it's at SUNY New Paltz, two minutes away, or it's online, uh, or it's some other places. Many, many, many choices uh, each semester. Um, pets, for people who come here who have pets, um, this is a pet-friendly place. Um, you can have up to two cats or dogs. I think they might go out birds, I can't remember. Yeah, and that's about it. Uh, but they're, they're, uh, I have cats, but um, there are people who have dogs, and um, th there's some concern what happens if you don't feel good, and how do you walk the dog? It's a, there's a whole community around that. People help each other out. Either if you go on vacation, somebody covers your pets, or if you don't feel well. You know. It's a very collegial, communal place. Um, and 
and in terms of doing things, um, uh, I'm, I'm on a lot of committees. I go to a lot of meetings, um, but I don't go when I'm not in the mood to go, and I don't go to things that I'm not really interested in. I check things out. Um, I find the place stimulating. I find the people warm. Um, the other places I saw in the New York City area, none compared in terms of the the um, warm, authentic, um, caring communal feelings amongst the residents and also the staff. So, thank you. Good afternoon, I'm Fred Walensky, and my husband Joe and I have only been living here since December, but our journey to Woodland Palm started a few years ago when we realized that our forever house that we built and designed and loved was not going to really be forever for many, many reasons. And we decided that we should eventually move to a CCRC. So we quickly honed in on Woodland Palm for many of the reasons that other people on this panel have mentioned. But we were also especially impressed that the Women Pond had received LGBTQ healthcare equality leader status from the Human Rights Campaign since 2018. They were the first CCRC in the country to receive this status, and they're one of only a handful of CCRCs around the United States that are on the Equality Index at all. So we knew we would be welcome here, and that was important to us. We planned to move in five to 10 years, and we wanted a cottage unit. So we found out the cottage waiting list was about five to eight years, so we decided to get on the waiting list, even though we didn't plan to move right away. There's no downside to being on the waiting list. The deposit is fully refundable with interest at any time that you want to get off the waiting list. If you don't want something that they offer you, you can say no because you don't want that unit, you're not ready to move in, whatever reason, without losing your place in line. And the waiting lists keep growing and growing, so it's good to get a place as soon as possible so you can start working your way up the list and be toward the top when you are ready to move in. And you may also get a phone call that surprises you and changes your life, which we did. About a month after we signed up on the waiting list, which we expected to be at least five years, we got a call saying that they are building six new cottage units, which are going to be bigger than the current cottage units, have upgraded amenities, and will be ready to move in in one to two years. And if we wanted one, we could have it. So we looked at each other and we said, well, that's what we want when we move in here. We want one of those new cottages, we want a brand new, we want a very specific location, specific unit which we were able to get that specific location that we wanted, so we grabbed it. We didn't want to miss that opportunity which may never happen again. And while we were waiting, we got on the Future Resident Program, which is another reason to join the waiting list. Anybody on the waiting list can join the Future Resident Program, no cost at all, you get a badge like this, you can come to any event here at Woodland Pond, uh, participate in any activity. You can dine in the dining room for 25% off. So we came here regularly. We lived in Wappinger, and we watched our cottage being built from the ground up. And we, meanwhile, we participated in yoga classes, the gym. We went to some meetings and activities and meeting a lot of people. And it gave us the confidence that we were making the right decision. And also, when we did finally move here, we already felt like we belonged because we already knew a lot of people. We were familiar with a lot of the activities and with the facility. So it really helped in the transition. We also had to downsize, like everyone else. Um, and we went through our house a few times, getting rid of a lot of stuff that we really didn't need. As, as hard as it was emotionally sometimes to part with some things, when it was all said and done, it was. It was actually very freeing and very revitalizing at the end. And we were able to move into our cottage, which is about half the size of our house, and furnish it in a way that was very uncluttered and even have a little empty space and some closets. So and we got quickly involved in lots of activities here. There's tons to do on campus that people have been saying. And there's also a lot of things to do off campus. Uh, I also joined the Lifetime Learning Institute I got involved with a group of residents who travel off campus to play pickleball at some local call courts. I've never played pickleball before, but I quickly got hooked on that. There are cultural events at SUNY New Paltz, at the UPAC in Kingston, Barnum and Poughkeepsie, other colleges and, and theaters in the area, Vassar, Bard, County Players Theater, Rhyme Performing Arts. Uh, the downtown New Paltz is a great village to explore. The SUNY New Paltz campus is right there. 
The Walthamville Valley Rail Trail is right there. You can walk on it. It's a great place to walk. There's the Milbrook Preserve right next door if you want to do hiking. Mohawk Preserve nearby and a special treat. You can visit Mohawk Mountain House. And other things we haven't even had time to explore yet, like Stars Huguenot Street, and kayaking, local, lake, local lakes and rivers, and various restaurants in the area. So we did end up moving here a lot sooner than we originally planned, but we're very happy with the decision that we made. Thank you. Hi, I'm Joe, and from the minute we walked into Woodland Park, we felt this was home. Everyone embraced us. Before we even moved in, Mary Lou Coffin invited us to dinner. I said, who is this woman? Is she stalking us? <laughs> but everyone has been so kind and friendly, and I taught for 33 years theater at Dutchess Community College. I was chair of the arts for 18 years, and I retired and thought, but well, what am I going to do now? That lasted about two minutes because I wake up early, which is unusual for me. I go to yoga class, exercise class, the gym. I joined five different committees. With the library committee, I'm sure have you seen our library? If you haven't, it's beautiful. You should go see it. And I bring 34 novels, and when you walk into the library, you will see Woodland Pond authors. And so anyone who lives here who's written a book, our books are on the bookshelf. And I also did an author talk and reading of my books here. I'm on the Interface Committee, the Sustainability Committee, and the Landscaping Committee. So if you enjoyed all the beautiful flowers when you walked around, it's because of me. <laughs> no, we have a landscaper. Mark, we just give him, we just tell him what we like. And he's, he's great. Dining committee, I am also on. And so you're going to get a terrific lunch. We have a Culinary Institute of America graduate chef who's terrific. We have four different menu items, always a vegetarian choice, at dinner every night if you come to dinner. And they are always open to resident suggestions. If you have a special dietary need, they will take care of you. And there is no tipping. So you can give me all your tips on that. <laughs> Kidding, no, there's no tipping, which is, is wonderful. Fred and I started an LGBT and allies interest group where we have discussions, speakers, parties, movies, and trips. And once every two months, we have Joe and Fred Theater Night where we do a play, an original play or a standard play that we put on here. And with my theater background, I feel right at home right now because it's like doing theater. So I'm very used to this, uh, this setup. There are many vocal and instrumental concerts that are wonderful by residents and outside groups. And I say the last thing, which is the best thing for last. We are embarking on a major renovation and expansion here. The dining room is going to be redone, the pub expanded, redone, the gym expanded and redone, and we are building a new performing arts center. And I'm trying to get them to name the theater after me, but so far I haven't got it. But uh, it's going to be amazing. And there are resident focus groups for each of these things where we give our input about how we envision it. And that's what they're using for the designs. So as Dorothy Gale said, there is no place like home. And I hope to see you all here. Hi, my name's Maddie Lee. I've been at Woodland Pond for 11 years. Um, when we came here, my husband, who has since died, said, why are we doing this? And I said, I don't have the faintest idea. So I'm not going to be the person who tells you there was great reasoning and brilliant. We did look at some other places, but I won't even talk about that. My job is to talk about death and dishwashers. 
I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand, but I would bet that fully 50% of the people in this room would say, you're not ready. I want to quote a younger friend of mine who told her parents, you have to move while you're still young enough to learn how to find your way to the bathroom in the dark. <laughs> and she's right. You need to move before you think you need to move. It's really that simple. Uh, we took everything we could get, everything we could afford, and it included the life care option. And you can read about that, people can talk to you about it. Um, and indeed, my husband became ill about, I think it's five and a half years now. I may be, I may be wrong about that. I'm old enough to forget what your things are. And again, it was the smartest move we ever made. Having a spouse in the health center when you live here means you can go for breakfast, you can go spend the day, you can go for dinner, you can go any time at night. You don't have to get on a bus, you don't have to drive, and there's support. And I want to say that the support and the care that Martin received there was as tender and personal and loving as certainly more so than I could have provided. Okay, about that dishwasher. Why are we talking about that? I lived in a pretty nice apartment building in New York with a wonderful super and a maintenance guy and the service was very good for a New York City apartment. My dishwasher finally decided to die I picked up the phone, I dialed the concierge, I told them the problem, they sent down somebody from maintenance, and within two hours, I had a new dishwasher. That's two hours. I didn't have to call about prices, I didn't have to hunt, I didn't have to do comparison shopping, I didn't have to pay to have the old dishwasher taken out, the new good, none of that. Just the day before yesterday, I'm embarrassed to tell this story. It shows you it's important for me to be here. I couldn't find my car keys, and I was mildly annoyed. But I know that I find things eventually. I'm in a cottage, and so there are not that many places, although I find them, to lose your keys. I went out to the car with the spare set of keys and discovered where I had left the keys. In the ignition, turned on. Made not a noise when I tried to use it. <laughs> Again, this may have been 15 minutes of a uh, maintenance worker showed up with one of those little black plastic thingies that we had but could never learn how to use. He started in the car for me. No extra charge. No trying to call AAA, no hassles. I think whatever reservations you have about whether you're ready, you're wrong. Um, anything you feel you would be losing, the sense of home, friends, uh, occupations, is available to you here. It is an incredible space. I want to say one last thing going back to death. When Martin died, he had been in skilled nursing, as I said, and a number of months. And the phone rang at about 7 in the morning, I think. And they told me that the night shift felt that he definitely was going to die that day. So I dropped my coffee, my coffee cup and I threw on a sweater, got my keys, which I found and drove up to skilled nursing. He was indeed dying. 10 minutes later, one of my closest friends here showed up at the door and she said, I was out for a walk. I noticed your light was on and it also looked as if somebody had driven out of your driveway in a hurry. So I decided to come up here and check. Now think about that. I don't care where you're living, that's not gonna happen to you. She called 
two other people that she knew I was close to. One of them is here, Dawn was there. And the three of us sat and waited as Martin died. I had not known these women four years before. No friend of mine from before could possibly have gotten here in time. And it was an extraordinary experience. I really hope you will recognize how much there is to be gained by coming before you think you're ready, because it's a hell of a place to live, whether or not you're going to die. Hi, everybody. My name is Dick Barry. I'm the old man of this group. Um, last uh, year at a similar luncheon, I joked that everybody on the panel was not really residents at all. They were all hired actors. <laughs> but my joke boomeranged on me because afterwards a lady came up to me and she said, you know, you were very convincing as a resident. So I'm not going to make that same joke again. Uh, I've been a resident here for 13 years, 13 very, very happy and productive years. Uh, you can say, all right, happy, but why productive? Well, when I uh, retired from a very large Long Island school district where I had served as director of education, I aspired to be a writer in my retirement years. 11 of my 16 books were written right here in Woodland Pond along with six uh, short plays that I wrote for our in-house um, play readers group, and I even wrote an anthem for women's uh, choral group. So uh, that, that's why I consider myself to have been very productive. I also wrote two books about experiencing life at Woodland Pond, which uh, marketing has uh, shared with people, and they seem to find them gratifying. Uh, when I was celebrating my 70th birthday, I took an inventory and was very bleak in terms of my future. I was divorced after many years of marriage. Both of my children were deceased. I had no living relatives, no family. I was facing a future alone and was really wondering where I was going to wind up. It was then that I started to investigate CCRCs. I visited five of them. And uh, as other people have uh, acknowledged, Women Pond just won hands down. Every time, I made five visits here, every time that I came here, all I met was smiling faces, happy people, happy staff members. This just enthralled me and, and just drew me into this community immediately. I loved the swimming pool, which was large enough to do laps, and I was a lifetime lap swimmer. I loved the magnificent library, and in learning that all the, all the books had been donated by the residents, that really, really impressed me. I love the fact that it was a college town, which offers additional mental uh, stimulation and cultural events. I loved its easy access to Manhattan because I was born and raised and married in Manhattan, and uh, Manhattan had always been at the very center of my adult life. Um, but what I want to stress to you is that the overriding aspect of this community that convinced me that this was the very perfect place for me was this. Woodland Pond was the only CCRC that offers you private rooms in all of its areas, memory care, assisted living, skilled nursing, all the other, all the other CCRCs that I visited only offered semi-private rooms in skilled nursing that was not acceptable to me. Uh, I know that many of you might have already seen the uh, financial comparison worksheet. Uh, I did that. Paul made reference to it. And there was a very negligible increase in what it would cost me to come here. And I felt for all the services that I was being offered, it was well, well worth it. 
Uh, and moving in, Maddie told you the story about a dishwasher. I'm going to tell you the story about having the flu. I was here for less than a month, and suddenly I came down with the flu. I had not, not known anyone prior to coming here. All of a sudden, I was besieged with get little cards and phone messages, and people were even leaving containers of chicken soup on the, on the counter outside of my door. A true symbol of what a caring community this, this, this truly, truly is. Um, uh, for the first nine years that I was here, I wintered in Puerto Rico. Uh, all I had to do was notify management as to how long I would be gone, and then lock my door and off I'd go and come back months later and unlock my door and resume my life with not a worry at all. That was, that was just marvelous. Uh, I, uh, I, I discovered the express bus that took me into Manhattan where I could meet with friends for lunch and go to a man-made performance or a museum and then come right back home in the late afternoon. Um, something, another thing I want to stress to you is that I discovered serendipitously that the federal government considers a portion of your monthly maintenance to be a prepaid medical expense and consequently it's a tax deduction. So every year I've had a very nice tax deduction based upon my cumulative year-long um, um, monthly um, maintenance fees here at Willing Park. And that's something to really uh, consider. Uh, I've, um, I've, I found that uh, there was, as I've already been mentioned, so I won't, I won't repeat it, but we have a very, very strong voice here in Women Pond in its day-to-day -day operations. Our very bylaws uh, insist that we have a resident council uh, where all the residents elect the representatives. Maddie here was a former president of the resident council. Our bylaws also insist that we have two residents who serve on the Women Pond Board of Directors. Now, there's something unique about that because many, many CCRCs do not allow residents to serve on their board. Other CCRCs allow residents, but they're not voting members. Here at Woodman Pond, the two resident directors have full voting privileges. I've had the honor for the last eight years of being one of the two residents to, to, the, uh, to the board. And uh, it's been a marvelous experience. They really, really listened to both my colleague and myself in terms of our interpretation of all issues as concerns our fellow residents and the future of Women Pond. Um, we have, uh, uh, Paul mentioned that we have 49 activities and groups that a new resident can join. Paul, I have an upgrade. It's now up to 51. Uh, but truly, I remember uh, some time ago, a lady who was a new resident said, you know, this place is like a cruise ship. I, can, I get up in the morning and I can choose to do all of these activities or not. But uh, that's really true. And I would invite you to join us but you can still take advantage of all that Woodland Pond has to offer because it's a very vital, vibrant, inviting community that you would truly, truly enjoy. And uh, I know I speak for everyone here when I say, uh, come join us. We would love to welcome you as new neighbors and friends. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Um, big thank you to all of our resident speakers today. Thank you for sharing your stories. Uh, thank you to everyone who has joined us. I hope you enjoyed uh, listening to their stories. My name is Shannon Spatoro. I am the director of marketing at Woodland Pond. Quite a few of what I know, quite a few of what I've met before. Uh, welcome to all of you who are joining us for the first time. Lunch will come out shortly, so in the meantime, what we'd like to do is open this up to some questions uh, from the audience for our panel of residents. 
So if anyone has a question, just raise your hand and I will make my way around to you and the panel will happily answer. Mm -hmm. We're dealing with storage area. Storage areas. I certainly know that answer, but just. Where? <laughs> uh, downstairs, uh, the level below this, every, every apartment has a storage area. I can't tell you the dimensions. Uh, nine by eight by six. Or six. Five by four. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Five by four by eight. Um, if, if you have stuff that you can't fit into your apartment. Um, Anything you want to put in there is welcome, as long as it's not flammable. that you have to put it back 
But I think in reality, it depends on whether or not um, the next guy likes it. Is that, is that, yeah, kind of, okay. For instance, you can't take walls out, but you would have to have those walls put back in. Uh, do any of you subscribe to a plant-based diet? And if so, how have you uh, found the dining experience here at Wooden Wall? Well, we're fighting over the microphone. So, <laughs> I just want to answer your question first. One thing we did in our cottage is we have a patio, but we did an upgrade to make it a four season room, which is great. So on your lawn, we can look out at the woods, the mountains, whatever, and so it was an upgrade from patio. We were allowed to do that. But the question about the plant base, there are many uh, vegetarians here. Of the four menu items at dinner every night, one is always vegetarian. We have always two salad choices, and the salads are amazing. My favorite one is spinach, burrata cheese, pine nuts, and grilled peaches. <laughs> but there's various different salads. And you can always get tofu on anything. We have some vegans here. And so if you say you're a vegan, they will make you a vegan dish. And one of our residents who's a vegan gave Amy four cookbooks of how to cook for vegans with recipes that they have in the kitchen. So you won't have any problems with that. I want, to, I want to say a little more about that because I think it's an excellent example of what is truly priceless about woodland plumbing. When we moved in, there were no vegetarian options. Somebody moved in who was a serious vegetarian, and he had to fuss a little bit. He went to council, council meetings, excuse me, and he went to the dining committee. We now have at least one full vegan dish on, on the menu every night. And it was because the dining committee listened to the residents and the management listened to the dining committee. Okay, Fred, a slight correction. The vegans are the people who live in Las Vegas. It's the <laughs> vegans we're talking about. <laughs> Earlier, I talked to Paul and found out that they would come down and look at a lot of the tools that my husband has. My husband, by the way, died and they would be only too happy to bring them up here if they thought they were worthwhile. So on that vein, I have another question. I'm downsizing and I have a room full of books. I have a lot of novels. I have a lot of historical books. Would Woodland Pond be acceptable to receiving some of those? Uh, I think that would be up to the library committee, but. I used to be a publisher, and when we moved out of our house, we gave away over 3,000 hardcover books. So downsizing is probably an option for you. Uh, I don't know whether the library here would come and look at your uh, works ahead of time, but perhaps. I, I always, I get that question a lot. Um, a lot of people moving in want to bring their libraries with them. Um, our library has over 6,000 books right now. We are very full. But somebody from our library committee will speak to you about what you have and see if we can take certain things here or not. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else with questions? I want to know what portion that uh, at the entrance fee will be tax deductible. That depends on the entrance fee plan that you choose. Each one has its own tax deductible portion, 
and it also depends on whether or not you take life care. So we discuss that with you privately. We have a letter that we give you uh, to show you what percentage based on what entrance fee plan you choose and whether or not you choose life care. Life care is 100% tax deductible if you choose to purchase that, but that does lower the tax deductible portion of your entrance fee because the life care is fully refundable. That is something that we can talk about separately because everybody chooses a different entrance fee based on their own finances. Could I ask if any of you own an electric vehicle and if you could comment on the charging situation at the facility and as a follow-up, uh, what about uh, energy efficient um, uh, appliances and so forth. Do you find the uh, the uh, facility to offer those? Well, bear in mind that you don't pay a separate electrical bill, so unless you're really hawkish about it, I have no idea what I pay for electricity. It's included in the monthly fee. Um, there are how many charging stations now? There are six, eight. Do I hear ten? Sixteen. <laughs> I think there are six, um, and there's no fee for them. I want to go back to the library question. You are not alone in having a lot of books. The chances of all of your books being accepted are very slim. But there is this amazing moving bookshelf out there when you go out. Take a look. It's right outside the door of the library where books that are not in, not accepted for the library are available for free, you take them, and the only uh, stretcher is you may not bring them back. <laughs> Just to answer the EV uh, question, the, well, there are six charging stations, there's no fee to use them, so, so you're, you're fueling up for your vehicle for free. Plus the new cottages, the new cottages have a 220 volt outlet in the garage so you can put in your own charging station in there and again charge your, your vehicle in your own garage for free. We're planning to get an EV, we don't have one yet, but we do plan to get one. So, and, oh, and the new cottages are all electric, there's no fossil fuels in the new cottages, so, so they are very environmentally conscious in all the new construction especially. Any more questions around here? Are the activities, um, like the painting classes run by residents or like, um, cause I'm like interested in oil painting and acrylic painting, but you, it looks like you only have watercolor painting. But I'm not skilled enough to teach the class. <laughs> Well, I guess I'll answer that one. Our watercolor class is by an instructor. We do have a lot of residents here that are artistic and they keep most of their own paintings and, and supplies in their own apartments. We don't have any other classes right now besides the watercolor class. We're always looking for volunteers to teach them, but it just I, I think that once we expand and make our, our studio bigger, we'll have more of an influx of that coming in. Um, our director, uh, our activities coordinator, has monthly planning meetings for things that residents want to do. So really all it takes is someone like yourself to bring up an idea, and it's very easy to get a new group together, and then we can search out for either a resident um, instructor, which we have a lot of artists here, and or someone outside of the community. We've had some random books um, here and there. Um, we do have a uh, pottery wheel, we have a couple kilns. Um, it just takes interest to get something up and running again here. Any more questions? Yes, um, I know some of you have spoken about about challenges. I, are there any other challenges that you would um, tell us about? You know, if you live here long enough, some of your friends are going to get sick and die. And um, what I want to say about that is um, 
that it's in a curious way it's an opportunity because you get to be close and personal with um, the the end of life and that lets you see your own end of life in a different way. Um, Paul and I have a good friend now who's who's terminally ill and he's dying soon. And and we have felt so blessed to have that friendship of that couple and to be friends to them, it's Tom. Um, and that's an opportunity that uh, I think is rare outside of a community like this. So um, it's a challenge, but it's also a gift. Do you have groups for religious observance? And if so, what religions? We have an interfaith committee, and every month we have a speaker on some different topic. The last one was Quakers, we had come. And in the health center, one of the residents who is a retired minister does services there. We've had various services here. There's a Shalom group that I think every month also has a speaker. Every week, wow, they're busy. And uh, they had a Passover meal. So pretty much whatever religion you're interested in, there's some sort of activity about it here. And the interfaith group is great because we share all different belief systems together in one place, which is great. And people who need to be transported, who don't want to drive to church, let's say on Sunday morning, uh, the bus goes there. Um, yeah. uh, when the per I couldn't see who it was, but when the person asked, in addition to right here in this community, um, the village of New Paltz has an interfaith, a uh, Thanksgiving interfaith service that um, I was a part of last year. Every community of faith in the village and it includes Catholic, Jewish, Methodist, Episcopalian, Lutheran, Nazarene, or I'm sure I forgot who went to or something. Um, we had a, a service that gave us an opportunity to do good thanks. And at the end of that, a number of people said to me, you have no idea how much I needed that this year. So, in, both within this community and in the larger village community, we do have that. Uh, to Barbara, to finish uh, answering your question about special, there's an Alzheimer's group, there is an AA group, and there is a mental uh, health task force that went into I don't know if you want to mention anything about that. The Mental Health Task Force uh, consults with the staff, uh, presenting topics that might be of interest to the community. We have panel meetings, um, and we have guest speakers, um, and and there's resources. There's a staff person, Sarah, who's in charge of all the life of independent living. Um, she is available to make referrals to people who need um, particular care in whatever regard. And there's also, most importantly, now a caretakers group, a confidential one, um, which is a, um, not, no therapist, it's, it's a peer group of, of something under a dozen people who meet on a regular basis to talk about the problems of being a caretaker, because we know that the people who need the care are getting it. But the caretakers have been in the past sort of taken for granted or neglected in those are major needs. Hi. If, uh, one question, I guess two parts. If you retain Dr. 
doctors in New York City. And beyond the days you were taking the uh, trailways or the, uh, and the, uh, the metro board or driving, how easy, it, and none of you may have experienced this, but you may have had friends who, how easy is it to actually sort of pick up the phone and say to Fred at the front desk or whomever, gee, I need to get into Columbia Presbyterian at one o'clock on Wednesday, can you arrange that and bring me back? So that's one question. And the, sort of the second part of the question which relates to is, my sense is this area doesn't have much in the way of medical care, it has doctors, of course. But um, how do you feel, um, as, as you sort of, how do you feel in terms of access to, what should I say, just professional medical care? But the first question is probably more important to me. It's like, okay, I'm not going to take you to the Metro North. Can I get to New York City to go to Austin? Well, let, let me start with answering some of that. I am a New York snob. Um, as far as I am concerned, anybody who practices in this area is some kind of local Yahoo. Um, that is not true. There are excellent doctors. There are Two, three hospitals within 25 minutes, I think. Uh, the Vassar Hospital is the best known. There's an excellent uh, emergency service that appears that <clears throat> staff, as far as I can tell, are about 17 years old. But everybody looks as if they're 17, unless they have gray hair now, to me. Uh, and that emergency service is five minutes drive from here. You also can get, with prior arrangement, you can get uh, transportation to your something doctor, whatever it is, dentists, doctors, every kind of specialty. And although there are some people who still prefer to go to New York, most people find that the array of doctors here is quite extraordinary, and most people are satisfied with them. Uh, we provide, uh, the River Pond provides transportation locally to uh, uh, all your people and your doctor's appointments. But uh, I want to respond. Uh, I mean, like Maddie, uh, you know, I, I, I acknowledge that I was a born and bred Manhattanite. And uh, this past year, I had some very serious health challenges requiring uh, two operations. And uh, I immediately thought only of uh, going to. Uh, you know, New York and see the world specialists. Uh, but then my my uh, general physician convinced me that I should really explore some of the experts that were in this area. I did that, and I was uh, very very uh, satisfied with the uh, operations that took place. Uh, they were marvelous. Uh, uh, they were right uh, of the latest technological advancements. And um, so, as many said, uh, Vassar Hospital and uh, the premium medical group—they uh, are all, they're all uh, really first rate. And uh, we have to disabuse ourselves of the that notion that's typical of us that Manhattan is the only answer to all of our problems. <laughs> Our primary, our primary care doctor is 10 minutes away from here. He is an absolutely superb physician. And sometimes if I can't uh, get easy access to him on the phone, I just drive over there and make my next appointment. And just to answer your question, if you are going anywhere further than our normal routine um, transportation visits, we can certainly help you make those arrangements. Um, you know, certain fees are involved depending on where you're going and the duration, but we can definitely help you make those arrangements. You're welcome. Got a question over there. Just wondered if there's a meditation group that can be served here. Yeah. Okay. Someone comes and Ronnie's one. It meets every third Tuesday at 11 o'clock um, in the other room. 
Is there someone who participates in that guidance? <coughs> yes, she, yeah, it's an hour long, and she guides meditation. Um, she's been coming for several years now. Okay. She lives, I think, in Woodstock, not far away. Thank you, Con.
um, and it's run by residents. And um, I guess that's that's really what I have to say to you. That's that's the most encompassing. I want to give you a, a very specific example. From for ten years now, uh, on one night of the week, I've been meeting with a group of five other residents, and we formed a great bond and friendship. But very early in our coming together, uh, we realized that there were two. We had partisan views in terms of uh, politics, and we felt uh, very passionate about certain religious aspects. So we uh, established a pact that uh, those two topics would not be uh, ones that we would address when we came together because we were coming together for friendship, conviviality, congeniality, and uh, as a result, we've had a wonderful, wonderful experience for an entire decade. But it was on that basis that we voluntarily established Um, I am part of a growing national movement in the United States right now under the um, umbrella of an organization called the Braver Angels. Some, some of you may have read about us. Um, and this is a group that is committed to not only civility, but um, also in helping people, not just on political issues, this could be family issues if someone is or has come out as gay, gender fluid, lesbian, whatever, and has had some difficulties, or it could be on religious issues. And one of the things that Braver Angels stresses is developing the capacity to listen. And I'll repeat that, the capacity to listen. Because one of the things that has been found time after time after time is those things that people feel passionate about, there is so much more internexus than what just superficial things seem to reveal. And I'm happy to talk with you about that later. And then the interfaith service that I told you about, where people said, you have no idea how much I needed this. Does anyone else have any further questions at this point? Well, dessert will be coming out soon, since most of you have either finished or are almost finished with lunch. Um, afterwards, the residents typically will come around and start to talk to you again. So if you have any further questions, there will definitely be somebody here to assist you and answer um, this problem with us. And thank you again for coming. I hope you enjoyed it.